Now we've talked about how to simulate random numbers from simple probability distributions, uh, but the question now is, how, well, what if you want to uh, simulate um, data from a, from a model? So, for example, like a linear model. So I've got a very simple linear model here. Um, it has a single predictor x, and it's going to have random noise, what I call epsilon, that, that has a normal distribution with standard deviation two. Um, there is a, the outcome is going to be generated uh, by by with using these two regression coefficients. I've got an intercept beta naught and, and a slope beta one. I'm going, to, I'm going to assume that beta naught is equal to 0 0.5 and beta one is equal to two. So the question is, how do I simulate from this model now that I've specified what it is? Uh, so I here at the first I set the seed. Uh, remember, it's always very important to set that seed. So I set it to 20. Um, uh, I generate x, the predictor, which is, has a standard normal distribution. I generate epsilon, which is going to have a standard a, a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation two. And then I'm going to add them all together by and after multiplying the regression coefficients to generate my y. And so from the summary here, you can see that y has roughly a mean of 0.68. Um, and, it has, and it ranges from about minus 6 to plus 6. Uh, and then I can plot the data to see what they look like. And here they are on the next slide. So this is the plot of the x that I simulated and the y that I simulated from the linear model. And you can see that they very clearly have a linear relationship uh, according that follows the model that we specified. So uh, just a slight variation of the previous example. What if x is a, instead of x being a normal random variable, what if x is a binary random variable? So remember, it, maybe it represents a, a gender, or maybe some treatment versus control, or something like that. Uh, so here, I, that's very simple. I can generate binary data from the using the binomial distribution uh, and the R binome function. So I set the seed again. And I generate a uh, hundred binomial random variables, and these are going to have this, these, this is from this comes from the binomial di distribution, which is uh, n equal to one and p equal to half. So the probability of one is going to be equal to 0.5. So I generate a hundred of those, um, and then I generate my normal random variables, my normal error term, which is going to me be mean zero and standard deviation two, um, and then I add them all together to produce my y. Uh, so now when I look at the summary of y, I see the mean is about 1.4, and it ranges from about minus 3 to 6 or 7. Uh, so when I, now when I plot the data, of course, they'll look very different because the x variable is binary, uh, but the y variable is still continuous. It's normal. So here you can see that there, is, there appears to be a pretty clear, again, linear trend uh, when x, between going from x equal to 0 and x equal to 1. Now suppose we want to simulate from a slightly more complicated model, uh, a generalized linear model, perhaps with a Poisson distribution. And so, for example, we might want to simulate some outcome data that, have, that are count variables instead of continuous variables. So we have to use a slightly more complicated approach to do this, uh, in particular because the error distribution is not going to be normal. It's going to be a Poisson distribution. And so let's assume that the outcome y has a Poisson distribution with mean mu, uh, and that the log of mu follows a linear model with the intercept uh, beta naught and a slope beta one. So x is going to be one of our predictors. So let's assume that beta naught is 0.5 uh, and beta one is 0.3. So how do we simulate from this model uh, to get our Poisson data? So um, so we need to use the R Poise function for this. Uh, and so we first set the seed as always, and we generate our predictor variable x, uh, which is going to have a standard normal distribution. Uh, then we're going to simulate generate our lin linear predictor log of mu, uh, which is just adding the slope and the, the intercept and the slope coefficient times x. So that's the log of our linear predictor. But when we but in order to get the mean for our Poisson random variable, we need to exponentiate that. So we we simulate a hundred of these uh, Poisson random variables using the R Poise function, and we give it the ex the exponential of our log mean. Um, so when we uh, summarize this, you'll see that the mean is about uh, 1.5, um, and it ranges between 0 and 6. When I plot this data, you'll see that uh, they look like Poisson data, and that there's clearly a linear relationship between x and y. As x increases, the count for y generally gets larger, uh, but the data are still count variables here. So the last function I want to talk about uh, is the sample function, uh, and the way and the sample function allows you to draw randomly from a, a specific set of objects um, that you specify. So if you give it a vector of numbers, it allows you to draw a random sample from that vector of numbers, um, and so you can kind of create any arbitrary distribution that you want by specifying a vector of objects and then sampling from it. So here, for example, I'm going to sample from the integers one to ten.
So I pass it the vector of integers 1 through 10, and I tell it that I want to sample randomly four of them without replacement. So, um, so I, I'm just choosing four random entries from 1 to 10. And here I get 3, 4, 5, 7. If I do it again, I'll get 3, 9, 8, 5. Um, so in this example, I, I, will, I won't get repeated numbers because I'm not sampling with replacement. Uh, I don't have to just sample numbers. I could sample letters if I wanted to. So here I'm taking the letters uh, A through Z, and I'm just going to sample five of them without replacement. And I just get Q, B, E, X, and P. Um, now, what happens if I don't specify anything? I just give it the vector of objects. So here I'm passing sample uh, the vector 1 through 10. And if I don't specify anything else, what it does is it gives me a permutation of those. So here the vector uh, 1 through 10 is just permuted in a random order. If I call it again, I get, a, I get yet another permutation. Um, so lastly, if I want to sample from 1 through 10, but with replacement, uh, I can specify the replace equals true argument. So now I'm sampling. 1 through 10, I'm getting a vector of uh, 10 numbers from the vector 1 through 10, but because it's with replacement, I can get repeats. So you can see I got 8 three times, and I got 9 uh, multiple times. So that's how you sample with replacement. So that's a very quick summary of the simulation functions in R. Uh, you can draw random samples from specific probability distributions uh, with the R function, so R norm, uh, R plus, uh, or sorry, R poise, R binome. We saw already. Uh, all the standard distributions are going to be built in that you ha probably you will need things like the normal, the Poisson, the binomial, the exponential, gamma, etc. All those functions are built in, and you can use the corresponding R functions uh, to simulate from them. The sample function can be used to draw uh, random samples from arbitrary vectors so if you want to kind of create your own distribution here um, and then it's very important to, to remember to set the random number generator seed anytime you simulate data in R so that you can reproduce the results that you got at a later date